Austria is a country which clings to its old imperial traditions. It's also a country haunted by its past. When the troops of the Third Reich marched into the streets of Vienna, this was the only country to applaud, indeed, to join them. Yet after Hitler's defeat, Austria was allowed to waltz away from its responsibilities, deemed a victim, not an accomplice to war. It was the beginning of the big lie. The truth about Austrian politics is that for 45 years, they have been interminably dull. A stuffy coalition relying on the wealth of the country to stay in power. But all that has changed. We had been attacked uh, as xenophobic and, 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 and fascist movements. I think it, it, there, is no reason, uh, there is an, uh, no reason in behind. It's, it's only the question of, of having a strong battle uh, in Austria between uh, a bloc of two powerful parties which, which do not want to lose this power. And we had been too successful in the past, and therefore they use all arguments they can put on the table to uh, attack us. The son of two committed Nazis, Jörg Haider grew up in northern Austria, but his power base is in the south, in the picturesque province of Carinthia. In this mountain fortress, far from Vienna, Haider served his political apprenticeship. From young party apparatchik in the mid-70s, to leader in the mid-80s, to governor of the province. But the rise and rise of Jörg Haider has not been without setbacks. It was here in Carinthia, the Freedom Party's heartland, that Jörg Haider made the first of three statements which were to haunt his political career. In 1991, during parliamentary debate, he praised the sound employment policies of the Third Reich. And in the furor that followed, he was forced to resign as governor. A couple of years later, he attended a reunion of Waffen-SS veterans whom he described as sound, decent men of principle. And a few years after that, in 1995, he called the Nazi concentration camps punishment camps, which was taken to imply that the people in them were criminals who deserved to be there. Now, Haider's supporters have painted these as mere slips of the tongue, but for his critics, the real slip was allowing his true views to emerge. I think uh, it's, it's not necessary to, 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 to discuss on historical situations because the, the history is clear and you have no to, not to do any interpretation about it. Mm. You've, you've apologised and said, expressed regret from some of your statements That's in the past. Do you think that will mean it's over? I think it's, it's fair by a politician to apologise and to say, I made a mistake because if you are in policy during 20 years, time by time you make uh, some mistakes. Can it be left behind? Do you think you will be allowed to leave that behind? Yes, I think you have to, to apologise if you make a mistake and then it is over. Jörg Haider is the ultimate politician, a master at reading the people's mood. That mood is one of intense nationalism and xenophobia, especially among the young. The Freedom Party won 40% support from the under 30s at the last election. <laughs> under the National Socialists, there was Hitler Youth, now there's Heidi Youth. The president who worked on the party's Vienna campaign is Andreas Trammer. Why do young people like him? Because he's a very charismatic, a very charismatic person, and he also has the touch of the of the young man, you know, he's, I guess, uh, 13 years in politics, but he still, still have the, um, the aura of a young one, of a dynamic one, of a man who makes sports and is very, a very fit one. 
He is their Führer. They devotedly follow his lead. So on immigration, I would say that this, we can short it or say it in, the, in two, two words. Austria first or Austrians first. That's the way of politics. But we want to solve first the problems of the Austrians, of our own people, and then later on we can think about immigration. Austria is symbolic of the new fortress Europe, determined to defend itself against a massive influx of refugees and illegal immigrants. To the south of Europe lies ravaged Africa. To the east, the war-torn Balkans. The dispossessed are seeking refuge. In a massive operation, both police and military are used to control the border. 1,250 kilometres, which mark not just the easternmost point of entry to Austria, but to all the countries of Europe beyond. The heavy and expensive burden of policing this historic corridor is a condition of Austria's membership of the European Union. the actual uh, the border the border is at the end of the graveyard day and night along this silent frontier the military captures foreigners desperately seeking freedom No one really knows how many make it through illegally. But the number is growing, and so is the resentment against them, especially if they look or act differently to real Austrians. Multiculturalism? Jörg Haider dismisses the very idea as a fiction. Someone who comes to us has to accept our way of life, has to accept our tradition, has to accept our language and has to be open being integrated in our society. That's an invitation, because we want to make uh, Austrian citizens of them. Many foreigners, whether refugees or captured illegals, apply for asylum. Most fail and they end up in a place like this, a detention center. They come from all around the world. The one thing they have in common is that they will all be deported. We come from Afghanistan by car, by train, uh, three months ago. 25-year-old Fari Sharif has failed in his bid for safe asylum. He sees a return to Kabul as being a death sentence. If you must go back to Afghanistan, what will happen to you? Catch me. Yeah. You, you said they would kill you? Yes. Yeah. My daughter was born April, April 27th, 1996. Dixon is from Nigeria. His story is a complex one. He's legally married to an Austrian woman and has a child here. But the marriage has broken down. What can I do? His wife no longer wants him, and nor does the country. Dixon, honestly, do you think your problem is partly because you are black? I don't know. I don't really know. It's like a dream. The whole things are turning upside down. I believe this is not the way God wants my life to be. Many Austrians feel they should sort out their own problems before attending to the concerns of strangers like Dixon. It's a sentiment that Haider and his Freedom Party have exploited with considerable skill. You have to 
to provide housing conditions for them. You have to uh, organize a school system where they can uh, speak uh, their uh, traditional language, um, their mother language. Uh, we have uh, to provide working places, we have to provide jobs for them. So what's and if we have number? an increasing unemployment rate in Austria, I think it's, it's, it's not responsible to accept so many refugees, uh, so many immigrants coming to Austria and asking for jobs. Well, the, the last figure I saw was a 4% unemployment rate. That seems pretty low. We have about 7.3. Uh, uh, by, by the European measure, we have about 4.5. 4, 4 and you think This too... fudging of figures it's, it's is vintage Haider. Because... He also regularly overstates the number of foreigners flooding into Austria. That's like a river. The water is going down the river. And you have, uh, sometimes you have to build a cataract to slow uh, the water. New arrivals in Austria should be held to zero until um, a later time, like a cataract. Yes. He, he knows very well that people vote for him also because of this racist mo motives. And this is his policy. His policy is to uh, strengthen the problems of everyday life to make out of social problems ethnic problems. Doran Rabinovich is a writer and a Jew. His community has reported a tenfold increase in harassment and abuse since the election. He rejects Haider's apologies and backtracks on the issue of race as a political ploy. It would mean that it is possible and it would stay possible for the future too, to make racist opposition policy and then when you come near to power to get more rational. So this means that racist standpoints get more accepted. What it means is you can get away with it. Yeah. And this is a lesson that the Austrians have had all the time. I mean, think about what Austria got away with. And Germany didn't. But after 45, Austria got away with it. The largest welfare organization in Austria is Caritas. Across the country, they give refuge to foreigners seeking asylum. In shelters like this, the growing antagonism to foreigners is keenly felt. You can express now in public that you don't like foreigners, that you prefer Austrian culture, whatever they mean with that. that Caritas director Barbara Greinecke has seen a shift in public perception of her work with refugees. Well, in the beginning when I started in 91, it was like, oh, you're helping people. It was kind of the Mother Teresa thing. And it changed towards, oh, do you really think this is the right thing to do nowadays, to bring in so many foreigners? One of the Ron Vian Persham would take my big caritas. Same sukto, si familiam. Hava is a Kosova. She has not only suffered the horrors of the Balkan War, but has been cruelly mistreated by her Croatian husband and his family. Asylum in Austria is her only hope. But even if she is successful, she may find further conflict on the streets of Vienna. Yeah. In my district where I live, there are foreigners. And I hear when I go to the shop people complaining about those Turkish people who come to that apartment and the new Yugoslavian cafe over there and why is there no Austrian cafe anymore and stuff like that. Our countries, the European Union, is building up its own Iron Curtain on our side. And this makes me angry. I, I, I could play an easy role I could say, uh, we are for open borders, everybody can come and settle in Austria and live in Austria, and nobody would make a demonstration against me and nobody would uh, discuss uh, in a bad way about the Freedom Party. But we are responsible for our people, and we take this responsibility. And we know it's better to have an Austrian patriotism than to close the eyes 
and to, to, to accept uh, the rising of problems. While foreigners are the enemy within, his constituents also hear much from Jörg Haider about the enemy without, which threatens their very nationhood. It's called the European Union. This is my philosophy. A Freedom Party is against centralization. A Freedom Party is against uh, anti-democratic uh, institutions and bureaucratic monsters. That's clear. And therefore, we are fighting against this fortress of bureaucracy uh, in Europe. We want to bring the power back to the people. Well, of course, it, it's a typical populist cut. Uh, I am the man of the people and the others are not men or women of the people. And I think it's been... It's been really Politics professor and historian Anton Palinka believes there are connections between Haider and Hitler. But it's more a matter of method than mindset. We all know, I mean, Adolf Hitler used the hatred of the Jews to, to fuel his rise. Are we seeing something similar? Yes and no. Uh, maybe the no is more important. It's not similar because Europe has changed, Austria has changed. Uh, and uh, Hitler believed in his racist, anti-Semitic, xenophobic agenda. I think there's no one important, not Haider especially, who believes in such an agenda. But now a certain parallel, certain negative stereotypes which had been used by the Nazis are once more used. So we have these cases, but I think Haider is, of course, not a second Hitler, not even a second Hitler uh, in disguise. He's a first Haider. He's a first Haider. I, I would say he's the Austrian, the successful Austrian version of a new type of right-wing policy. Not just a successful version, a contagious one. As the giants of Europe's old right, such as West Germany's Helmut Kohl, falter and fail, a new European Reich is making its debut. In Switzerland, which went to the polls just a few weeks after Austria, a party of ultra-nationalists recorded stunning gains. In Belgium, in Italy, in Germany, in France. The same story and the same agenda. Anti-immigrant, anti-European Union with a distinct whiff of neo-fascism. The Cold War may be over, but there is a new chill in the air. Europe's condemnation of the Freedom Party's success has merely increased Haider's popularity. Austria now stands isolated from its European partners. It's a very dangerous situation. Do you believe that by the next election you will be Chancellor? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that it will happen. You're sure? I'm sure. 